Well, hey everybody and welcome back. My name is Sue and I'm from OML Embroidery. Hopefully everyone can see my cute little avatar and hopefully everyone can hear me. So just let, let me know. Awesome. <coughs> Transferring now to a large TV so we can watch as well. Xbox is lousy for chat, so I might not chat till later. As long as we know you're here, David, that's awesome. You can hear me? All right. Cool. Don says, uh, hi, Isabel and Sandy and Lila. Hello. And new person, TR2840. Um, awesome. 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 You can see my mouse. I'll bring it back in. So today we're going to talk about leaves. And I hope you guys liked my little corny joke that you won't believe what you can do with leaves. So we're going to have a lot of fun with this. And once I show you a few ways of doing it, um, it will be pretty cool. Pretty darn cool, I will say. So let's um, say bye to my leafy-eared me and look at some leaves. So I just did a Google search. And last year, two years ago, I guess, we went to... Um, this gorgeous nursery and I took pictures of leaves these aren't all mine but I took pictures of leaves just because I thought some of them were really pretty so look at the shape so this is kind of an oval with zigzaggedy ends this one I don't know what this stuff is called but it's gorgeous that caught my attention and uh, I don't think it's a flower it's just a ground cover and um, we have it in our backyard and it's beautiful. Just the bright green and the deep burgundy. But look at all these shapes. These kind of look like hearts. Um, these are long and skinny. This is an ivy leaf and it's um, pretty cool looking. Look at this one at the bottom. I kind of have cut it off. It is like jagged the whole bit. Um, isn't that cool? So different shapes. So you can just kind of pretty much anything goes that was the point of showing you guys all the pictures um but also you know you can see the different colors you know that's a little bit of shading there but look how it's almost yellow at the bottom and darker green on one side so you can learn a lot by looking at it and if you look too there is a shade of green everywhere so whatever shade that you use isn't going to be wrong. So that was the point of showing this. Okay, so this is what we're after. This is the sunflower that we did um, last week. That looks really good. And if you go into the OML Embroidery University Facebook group, um, Lila stitched hers out on a pillow. She did too. And it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So a rectangle for the stem, and then we're going to work on the leaves. Now, this leaf is the same one. I just made it bigger or smaller, which is kind of cool. Um, you guys should save whatever leaves you make. You should save them, and uh, you can use them again. So save them as a symbol or just make um, your own kind of symbol folder of little things that you can reuse, like a petal or something like that. Um, but these aren't exactly what sunflower leaves look like, but it doesn't matter. We know, we know exactly what it is, right? We know exactly what it is. I wanted to add in, if you have the lace, um, my lace maker edition, uh, leaves are pretty popular in lace as well. This is freestanding lace. I was thinking this one. Now these are just right out of the box. I haven't done anything, um, spe you know, specific or fancy to it. It is just the leaf shape with the proper mesh here and then a little satin stitch. But I was thinking that is like a two minute bookmark. Uh, Jackie Burke says, just got my lace maker. Yeah, it's awesome. Hi, Lise from Norway. Hello. 
You keep your Viking gremlins to yourself. <laughs> Which, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you should. But, you know, it's just a joke, of course. So, yeah, these could be bookmarks. You can, um, you know, just put writing in it easily enough. It's, uh, you know, a five-minute thing. So, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. I just like to show you guys... You know what you can do and they actually had some other shapes that i thought was interesting so am i off screen i am i'm going into my lace maker and uh look at the shape so i picked that one and i picked that one but this is a leaf with a little bend in it so that leads me to tell you guys that you know it they don't have to be symmetrical they're not symmetrical. I guess this one is, but it's a four-leaf clover, so kind of not the same thing. But look at the shape on this one. That's fantastic. So there's a lot of room to work with these shapes. So without further ado, unless there's any questions, let's get started. So in this software, which is Perfect Embroidery Professional by Dime, I use it for playing around for production. People always ask me, what do you use for production? Because we do have an embroidery business. I use E4 because that's commercial and that's basically what we're doing. To play around and do lace and do quilting and my avatar that you saw and some word things, I use this software. Um, one thing I like about it is that it has a whole bunch of different symbols and shapes and monogramming and lettering. My favorite thing, uh, I'm a very fonty person, and one of my favorite things when you do lettering is that it tells you the sizes. You don't have to look them up. So anyways, so let's go into shapes, and I happen to see this. Look, it's a leaf shape as well as a flower shape but i was like oh and this is the leaf shape right there and depending on how you pull it out the way uh, that's what i call because you're kind of like dragging it out um you get all the shapes that you need and i thought that was really cool from all the the leaves that we saw i mean you'll be able to just go like that and fill it and do what you want if you want to make it a little more interesting, we go into node mode and we're going to add a point and then just, you know, bring it in just like that. And now you have uh, click apply and now you have a much more interesting leaf shape. So I thought that was really cool. So kind of short and fat, long and skinny, but basically what this is, is just an oval with points. So if you don't have a fancy schmancy leaf shape, shape, then go to ellipse, and it's the same thing, however you pull it out. And we'll go into node mode, which is an awesome place to be. And we are going to uh, change this to line. And you can see we got the same point. And change the bottom one to line. And now we have our very own leaf shape to play around with so i'm going to add a point and just put it in and i'm going to hit apply and then we can see it so it's almost the same this one that i use the shape for is a little bit rounder so if you needed to pull these out a little bit to make them fatter you could but how easy is that for a leaf shape so that's just you know plain and simple we can go and we can convert to complex fill and you could add not that color although i love it not that color let's make it light green and you have your basic leaf it's a leaf there we go um you know it's nice that's fine but we can kick it up a little bit um there's nothing wrong with a leaf like this but uh let's do something a little bit more on this one so the way I like to do them, depending on if they're big enough or not, is doing it in two sides. And there's a couple things that make it really easy to do and look really good. So on this one, 
I had the oval, like I was talking about down here, and I just changed a couple of points and I deleted one or two points. So awesome. Filled it with stitches. And then the key is you change the angle of the stitches. Now remember, this is only one side, so that's fine. But the, the stitches going the same way as the, the detail work. Look at that. Isn't that cool? So I just copied one side and uh, made a copy of it and flipped it. And I left a little space here just so you guys could see that it's two sides. And the detail work of how the, the angles of the stitches go um, really gives it an interesting look. And then all you have to do here is I just add some running stitches again, move it together. Um, they, they should be overlapping just a little bit. And uh, so you don't have that line. But again, I just wanted to keep reminding you guys that it's two separate parts. Now, if you merge them or weld them together, then it will only be one angle and you will be right back to the the basic one that I said. So you do want to keep them separate. And I mean, to move it, you just like, let's move it a little bit here. I might have everything grouped. Nope, see, now that's too much. Let's do it a little bit better. There we go. Good enough. You guys get the idea. So I thought, you know what? This will be really fun to play around with. And I think this leaf looks really good. Now, if you're doing tiny leaves, you can do a simple one. Because if you put, um, you know, tons of uh, even running stitches on it, it's just going to look like a blob. So I'm going to make that one smaller. And of course, I'm in the working file. You see how different that looks? It's okay, but you really can't see the light green. So, I mean, not bad, but you could see the difference. So let's do Control Z, and we'll put that back to the correct size that I had it. And you see the difference in details? So plain leaves for small ones medium to bigger ones, you can start adding detail. And, you know, embroidery is all about the detail work. So let's try this on a few different shapes, um, just so we can go over what it is. Now, you can go out and take pictures of different leaves, trees, uh, leaves, leaves from trees, I've got um, some flowers in the backyard, and all the leaves are different, and it's fascinating. And if you use your own pictures, and you just take the shape from it, then of course, you know, you, there's copyright, um, no copyright on it. So it's a nice way of doing it. So this is just a random shape. I just took like a circle, and I added a few nodes to it. So it's... Uh, easy this way. Now, and remember, I'm going to say it again, leaves are not symmetrical, so you don't want them to be symmetrical. And as a matter of fact, I would suggest when we're doing half and half to take one of the halves and make a variant in it. So it's a little bit different from side to side. So this one, there's a couple ways of doing it. Actually, there's a million ways of doing it. Oh, Ronog. Is Ronog again? Hello, Ronog. Cindy King says, I wouldn't have thought to just have the small without the details. Great idea. Yep, small means less details. Big means more details. So you have to judge it. Like when I brought it down to really small, it just doesn't look the same, I thought. So um, use your judgment on that. But small always means less details. So let's have a look here. So I added a few nodes, that's fine, but what I want to do is divide this in half. So how are we going to do that? The first thing we're going to do is, I want to keep this dip in, but I'm going to make it a little more pronounced. So I'm going to change this to line, so we can get a line right through there and have our shape. And I'm going to delete, and I'm going to click on this one, I'm going to delete, I'm going to click on this one, and I'm going to delete. And voila, we have half a leaf. Wasn't that easy? I, I kind of think it was. <laughs> it's no problem. 
So now let's go and put it in stitches because right now there's no stitches. So complex fill. And there we go. And I don't think there's any actual blue leaves. So why don't we make it green? Very good. Pretty slow, but that's okay. And now we want to go back into node mode just so we can change the angle. So we want the angle of the leaf probably like this or like that. Kind of what it is, actually. I could make it a little bit stronger. Let's see what it looks like. So either way, depending on which way your leaf or leaf-ish, you know, how you want it to look. Let's try this way. It's just a matter of um, viewing. All right, I'm going to leave it like that just to be different. And I kind of like it. And um, if you stitch one of these out, you guys will see what I mean. Um, that it depends on the angles to make it look different. It depends on how the light is hitting it. And it's really fascinating that just changing the angle makes it almost a different color and it's really cool so let's uh control c control v which is universal for copy and paste and we've got that and let's uh reverse it and we're going to have to change the angle a bit um it's super easy in this though super easy so here and i don't have the right angle see that big gap now, we could do two things with this. We could add satin stitches. It even looks good with a happy mistake, right? We could add satin stitches for the middle of the leaf, if you wanted, in a slightly different color, and that would look fantastic. Or we can just keep uh, rotating it to look how I want. Have I got it? Pretty close. I just need to tilt it this way. See, there's a little bit of a space. You do want an overlap. Remember, push, pull. We don't want to leave it. And automatically, straight from the beginning, we have the line down the middle. But see how it looks with that? Oh, it's fantastic. So, a small leaf, you could leave it like this. It, it has built-in... Um, detail work already so you could do this one in smaller of course larger it would have a different effect so let's see awful slow today so this is actually quite small it's less than two by two so let's see if we can put some detail work into it and so i just picked the uh running stitch and i'm going to pick a lighter green um because i started off with the darker green and you can go either way but i think it starts here and i'm gonna not exactly match the angle on uh, that we have already and i'm not concentrating very hard on you know making it perfect we don't want perfection and i'm gonna hit enter and see how that looks I like it so a little more detail you could do smaller ones you could do bigger ones the only thing that we need on our leaf and I like the angle of it too. remember to try to add you know detail but perspective too. leaves don't have to be directly you know horizontal or vertical put a little tilt in it and uh, I think it works better that way. It just adds a little more interest to it. So let's make uh, a little rectangle. You could do satin block stitches in it if that's what you wanted. So let's convert it to um, satin. And we know that's going to look okay. Woo! It's not that many satin stitches. What the heck? Not responding. All right. Always, if you get a not responding, just... Don't touch anything, just wait. It seems really slow. I did forget uh, to restart my computer. So that's probably the problem. So I want to make this a little bit better. So I'm going to add a point here. 
and I'm going to add a point here. These ones right here, these black dots, those are not points. Those are the angles. Now, for a satin stitch like this, you need it going around um, side to side. You can't change the angles. So add a couple points. Um, it, this works nicely if you just kind of pull one down and pull one up. It looks, well, let's move the start and stop points there. And there we go. And actually, in the interest of organization, we want this one to start here because that's where I ended the light green. So we don't want any jump stitches. Now that looks a little more realistic and it doesn't look as much like a rectangle as uh, we had before. And we're just going to put this in place and... Bada boom, we have a gorgeous leaf. Grunog, thank you very much. Um, and by putting this little angle, do you see how it fits in the dip there? Um, but we have a really nice leaf. There's nothing wrong with that leaf. Let's see what happens if we make it smaller. Like I said, it's actually pretty small. Three, nah, with the, the stem on it, it's a little more. Let's make it small and see how our details look. Because remember, it's the working file, so we can do stuff. Um, even small, it's pretty. I like it. So you can do a leaf like this. Hold on. I, I don't know why I'm so slow. Control C, Control V, which is copy and paste, right? So it almost looks like a, a heart shape, kind of. So it's all about sizing and um, it's about turning the angles like this. And it's pretty hard to tell that they are the same um, when you turn them around. If you were going to do a whole row of them, um, then, you know, facing the same way, then that would be the same. If you wanted to change it up a bit, look what you can do to make it look even a little more realistic. Go into just one side and just kind of maybe pull this one out and maybe pull this one in so it's not exactly the same shape. And you've given it a little bit of perspective and they look completely different now. Isn't that cool? So you could just make them with little flaws, you could even, if you're doing it large enough, you could even put a little bite in it or something. That would be pretty as a vine border. Yeah, easy as pie. And you know what? You could put a little sunflower. Remember we did the, the flowers so many different ways? You could put your sunflower that you did. You could grab a shape. It's just as simple as that. And, I mean, it's just a basic shape, of course, but no big deal. Look at this. We could do Convert to Complex Fill and make it a pretty color. How about bright blue? Because why not? We can do whatever we want. And just put a little center in it, maybe with some details if you want it, or an outline. And you could do more of them and just come up with something. So... It's not difficult to do it like that. And even when we stand back, I call it, when we zoom out, you can see how good the little teeny variation makes. And I really like it. I, I just think you could save one and use them for different things if you wanted and, and add in your variations if you want. Now, I have a a longer um, leaf that we could work with half and half um, but it's the same thing so I mean we get along I, I'm excited to show you guys the next one because I took that pretty colored leaf and played around with it and this is what I came up with and we'll work our way to there so oh hi Karina glad you're here We'll work our way to this, but I wanted to show you guys the funnel because I was like, oh yeah, that's pretty sweet. Sandy, thank you. That's that's pretty sweet. So let's start at the beginning. Now, believe it or not, 
this is just the leaf shape. If you don't have this leaf shape, then of course, we I showed you how to do it at the beginning. It's just a circle, kind of an oval, and you change to line, and you change to line, and then you could maybe pull the sides out if you wanted. Ah, uh, sorry, had to pause for a drink. Um, super easy to do. Let's go back. I think it's here. And that is almost exactly the shape. So we're going to zoom in on this one a little bit so we can analyze it. Now, I'm not using this as a backdrop because I don't want to copy someone else's work. So I'm looking, and I also have some of these in my garden. But look at the little leaf and the big leaf and a bigger leaf. They're all basically the same thing, which is cool. But see the shape? It's almost exactly. Are we going to see an iconic maple leaf today? Yeah, I did a leaf. I did a uh, lace one. So yeah, for sure. So let's go back to our workspace here. So we've got the shape down right. We, we could maybe play around with it and uh, do it like that. Now it's dramatically two colors and that's what I really really liked about it are the bright bright colors and I played around with how to do it and I thought uh, Isabel thank you cool pear guy with a coffee yeah that's probably what I need <laughs> I don't drink coffee but I probably need it so how I did this is pretty cool. It's pretty easy. You could do it a number of ways. Marsha, thank you very much. And Alicia, these will be great in fall projects. Yeah, like I did the lace one, you can change the color. So instead of doing it green, I did it orange. Now, can you imagine three or four of those together? Beautiful, beautiful. So it kind of looks like I, I was looking at it going, okay, this isn't right yet. It, it looks maybe like it could be an avocado, but I kept going because we can work on it. There, there's different ways of doing it. We can change, you know, with this shape, make sure you get the shape that you want, however you want it, a little bit wider maybe. That's fine. That looks pretty good. And then you can copy and paste and um, make it a little bit smaller because if you remember on that plant, whatever it is, um, that this is what it looks like. Again, we're not copying. Karina, thank you. Thank you so much for these lessons. You're very welcome. Leaves are so much fun. And then all I did was fill them with fill stitches or tatami stitches, whatever you want to call them. And then um, you don't want the green stitching underneath the beautiful burgundy. That is just absolutely a waste. So depending on the size, and mine are actually big enough, you want to cut it out. Cut it out. And it's easy to do, remove overlaps, you can do a trim, it just really depends on your software. So for this one, a trim. You don't want to weld because welding will just make it one color and then you're back to the beginning again. But if you weld by accident, if you can't remember which way they go, because sometimes, you know, these pictures don't show it too well, they just you know, do an undo and get back to where you are. So trim, and then you get two pieces. So I just moved it aside so you guys can see that it's two pieces. And there's the proper amount of overlap because you don't want um, them right, you know, smack together. You want a little bit of overlap. And then I, I wanted to come up with the way of doing it let's go computer see it's not a perfect shape like what i have it it's jagged and there's a few pieces coming up and i wanted to do that because i think that's part of the look is the dramatic difference between the two so i came up with 
quite a few ways of doing it. Well, Misha, hoping my machine gets back soon. I want to make an embroidered leaf wreath instead of a paper one. Yeah, I don't blame you. I hope your machine comes back soon. So the way I did it, now this is um, just one way, and this would work for, you know, smaller, not, not totally small, but smaller to medium, small kind of sizes. And this is just a running stitch. Now it looks kind of complicated. I did it all in one run, but it's just out and back for each. And I connected everything. I didn't just do lines. So it starts here and it ends here. And I just did them randomly, um, different kind of angles. And I know this looks weird, but we are going to stitch it underneath. So you won't even know that it's there. And I thought, okay, let me show you. This is, uh, I want to see my size. This is, you know, I, I would say medium. So let's make it smaller and it looks completely different. Let's make it small. I like it. If you want these lines to be a little bit thicker, you can change them to a triple stitch maybe or a back stitch or there's another... Um, another stitch let me see i can't remember what it's called offhand it's kind of a zigzag stitch but not really um but i thought wow that is a great way of doing it you could when you're you're doing these little color veins of course it can be random right because stem stitch that's it thank you very much it's kind of zigzaggy but not too much that would look fantastic so when you're doing these, you know, colors, if you remember, they kind of look thick and thin in some places. So we have bigger ones. So if you're doing this is for small, start here, but don't come back exactly on the line. If you do it like this, it will look a lot thicker. And then I went down one and then maybe a shorter one and the, you know, round about the same amount of space in between you don't want you know like huge that's not going to work backspace but just not on exactly and hit enter and then uh change color i have that beautiful burgundy and that looks completely different now it looks kind of weird right now but stand back if you stand back on it it looks thicker than this one and they're the exact same stitch it looks thicker than this one so that's one thing you can take um, advantage of the big versus small and the detail work if this one is smaller the running stitch with a little bit of space is going to look really good so I started playing around with it um, I tried the gradient, but it just really didn't look good at all. Ooh, thank you, Lila, very much. Big hugs. That's a cute little, I think they said it's a fox. That's a cute little fox. Um, I tried, you know, the jagged edge, and I thought, well, that's okay. It's not quite the look I'm looking for. Let's change it to square and see if that makes any difference. A little bit of difference it makes it I mean it's almost the look but the only thing I didn't like is how it looks around the other edges so we can try um, playing around with the angles and see if that makes a difference um, and it kind of does but you still see that's a little bit better actually that is a little bit better so the angles might make enough of a dis difference to, um, you know, kind of blend it in. So I do like that much better. So if um, you stand back, you can see, you know, it kind of blends. I would fiddle around with it and, and make it a little bit smaller. But you could also do a combination of this kind of detail 
plus that. Now, obviously, it's not going to look right because I didn't uh, measure it out. But to give it that look, you could see. There you go. See? I think that looks pretty cool. It looks almost like shaded sort of thing. So that's something you can play around with and all about angles. Again, I would make this a little bit smaller. Now, the thing is with making it smaller is that we have it cut out. So maybe don't do your cutting out until until you decide what you want to do. Now, this is almost okay, um, but that's the problem. A lot of people ask um, that, you know, should I remove overlaps? Uh, yeah, for some things, if it's small, don't bother. It just creates more problem in general. But if it's larger like this, just wait and do it at the end because, uh, you know, I came up with this and then I'm like, oh, but, you know, it's too big. Now we could make the whole thing smaller, but I want more of the green See, let me go back here, Control Z to undo, and I'll probably have to do it a couple times because I was playing around with it. But I want more green to show, and you really can't do much else other than make the this part smaller. So even if you go in like this, you're going to end up with a little bit of a, a gap. Um, that's not too bad, but there is a gap. I can see way right through it, and it won't look as good. And it's still not quite what I want, so, you know. You can always, um, if you get an idea like this that works, you can always go back, um, start another one. It's just a leaf, right? Put it over top, make sure it's the same, and there you go. Where do you find the different stitches to select the stem stitch? Um, when you click on it, it's right here, and this is where you pick all the ones. Now that I have fill stitches selected, and you may or may not have all of these stitches. I have all of the add-on programs, so I might have, um, I might have uh, more than what you do. So um, that would be why. So, and if you're doing like a running stitch, where's my guy here? It'll be hard to grab. I always have a hard time grabbing stuff sometimes. If you're doing the running stitch, there, I have it selected. Then here, it's on the first one. So you could do two ply, bean, motif, symbol, crazy quilting, um, that sort of thing. So you can you can change it. Triple rope, I wonder what that would look like. Just a little bit thicker, and it's very um, very detailed, I guess. So you can give it a different look, but on both fills and outlines, that's where it is. So that would work on smaller ones. I was pretty happy about that, other than the cutting out. Um, but I wanted to show you guys the difference anyways. Um, and remember, it's kind of, you know, it's a good size. It's kind of a good size. So, I mean, that's, that's almost it. Obviously, we'd have to do some adjustments. I still want this one smaller, though, so I can have the dramatic difference between the burgundy and the kind of lime bright green. So, might require some playing, but I think it's pretty good. Now, you can also make the jagged part which is i always flip through everything because i don't look at the pictures well enough jagged type you i think you can move it more to make it more jagged um but it doesn't seem to make a huge difference on this size so play around with it add more green that sort of thing but then i thought oh um oh Oh, I thought that, you know, I don't want to sit and draw all the jagged marks on it. So I love my motif stitches. Motif stitches generally make me pretty happy. And I thought, okay, how about something like that? 
And of course, you can't do it too small because this is not uh, Karina. I keep thinking avocado. Yeah, I know. I know. But when you put them together, it doesn't look like avocado anymore. Um, instead of manually doing all of these, you know, variants between it, I thought motif stitch. And I love motif stitches. And I just copied this part copy and paste and then I changed it from a fill to an outline and then I changed that outline to motif stitch and uh, I really kind of like how it looks I just thought wouldn't that be pretty and do like a little bit of a darker outline on it and when we stand back it kind of has the look that I want um, looks like my hosta leaves. Yeah, if you were um, to change maybe the colors, look, if you change it to my hosta leaves are a bright green and a white, then you kind of get that look. Okay, obviously you have to do the other part. So let's, okay, control Z because I'll never be able to pick up on that. But nobody says a leaf has to look like you know exactly like nature sort of thing so you don't have to worry about it but wouldn't that be beautiful on just about anything yeah i think so i also thought you could do the whole shape in applique like the whole thing not a cutout the whole thing in applique and then stitch this part on depending on the size if it's bigger you could do both applique now, I have the motif stitch going first and then the inside, so it's kind of behind it. I don't want to see the stitches on top of it. Um, but then I got playing around and I picked some different ones. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. I like that one. I'd have to fiddle around with it. But it may be Jackie Burke. Thank you very much. It may be better to do your own running stitch manually doing going back to the half thing because these are kind of facing up and these are kind of facing down. So if you do it yourself, start at the top, go to the bottom, uh, they will all be facing the right way. So that's a quick way of getting around it. But look at how these sun stitches are working. And then I picked one. It looks like a teardrop and i played around with it and i decided to add the first one and then the teardrop now obviously it doesn't match up but huh, i was like yeah there's no reason why you just have to do one um that looks like a lot of intricate artwork on it and when you stand back that's really cool the other thing i thought of was on this part here motif doing something it's just like you know getting it fancier i think it's way at the end how about some candle wicking now of course leaves in nature don't have candle wicking i know that but look at that now what do you think i just took something that uh, you know didn't look the greatest and uh, I think this looks pretty spectacular. And if you play around with the spacing and the size, you could get it so there's a candle wick inside each one, like perfectly in the middle. So play around with it, spacing, size, the whole bit. But now we've taken a leaf and now we've made it into a really intricate, beautiful embroidery design. Um, you could also put a satin stitch around the outside, then you wouldn't have to, to move everything, and that's easy to do. Um, it's going to go around on the inside as well, but we're going to ignore it, because I just want to show you guys. Copy, paste, and give it a sec, and then convert to, and in this software, the satin stitch like outlines are called uh, steel. Or I probably always say style, just like I always say lame. Um, I think that looks fantastic. I think actually the outline that was in the middle would look really good when I selected it 
um i was like oh okay that looks awesome let's see if i can catch it nah i have so many things in here but see how it's uh, coming together look at that so even in blue um you'd have to move it in a little bit but doesn't that look even better so now we're getting some fancy stuff now picture it in um applique with all this over it and then you reduce the the bulk of everything i'm just like yep um i think that would look really good change the color please for the fourth time thank you very much look at that isn't that cool and do uh, a green one on the inside so yeah i mean it's not a realistic leaf but look what happens i put four together look at how they look does that not look like the um the one i showed you the actual photograph and again this is one you would keep i would fix the the direction of the motif stitches but this is one that you can use for detail work so if you need some color in your arrangement and karina it doesn't look like an avocado anymore right and it's the same one just slightly different sizes so let's go back to the picture doesn't that look almost exactly the same now this leaf is on top this one is underneath it this leaf is over and this leaf is over and that's all there is to it and i i was just so pleased with this now they do require um more work uh to play around with it different things and work on the layers and you know maybe not have them stitch over i wouldn't use remove overlaps but i would also put a little variant in everything so yeah it looks like isabel says it really almost like a real coleus yeah um stunning isn't it change sizes change the amount of details and i was like yeah wow so my love is this whole thing here um like i said you have to play around with everything to make it look better but just a couple of motifs and colors i mean i think this one is stunning i i think it's um really good i have a hard time selecting stuff because i have so many pieces going on see that's up there it's hard to figure out because i have so many of the same thing <laughs> it's kind of crazy so this is the style this is did i get it the run yes i got it what if we make that the green or introduce another color so you like i said play around with um shapes and and the sizes of everything and you know there's a big difference if you have something like this that you actually really like and you change the shape of it it changes the look of it as well see how that almost perfectly fits in and that is just one quick movement that i did and actually ha look at this on this side um most of them fit in perfectly but that looks like you spent hours doing it so does this and i thought you know what in our little garden box having one or two of these would be awesome try the candle wick wicking in yellow okay let me see if I can grab it again. I think I had it here, didn't I? Oh, no, wrong one. See, that's why I try not to grab stuff all the time, because I'm like, um, um, this one? Yes, because it's green. Bright yellow? Why not? Doesn't that look good? Sorry, had to have a drink doesn't that look really good oh i think that would be so much fun to do it just developed into that way and again i would play around with the size and all that kind of stuff now this one you cannot do small there is far too much detail 
for small. I think I have it actually really big. Um, I don't know what you'd use that for. Maybe a quilt block or something. Yeah, this whole thing is five by seven. There's nothing wrong with that, but again, spacing and watch your density. So I was really happy with this and the colors and everything. So what I tried to do now, this leaf again is, you know, almost five by seven. It's quite large, but I played around with the color blending. And I thought, because I thought if I could make it so the burgundy was in the middle and faded out to the green, that would be freaking perfect. But it doesn't work quite that way. Like, you can't set it up that way. Probably Wilcom E4 could do it because there's like 2 million suggestions on uh, how to do your gradient. But it's a different program. It's a, a different level. But I thought... Oh yeah, wow, look at this. That is a beautiful shaded leaf. Now, always when you're doing the gradient, what if you do it too small, I'm just gonna show you guys quickly, it is not nearly as good. Let me check the size. There we go. That's still a decent size, and you can see the different colors and but it's not as nice now remember too whenever you're doing it on the computer it's really harsh um it will blend a little bit better just make sure you have really good contrasting colors the green leaf is similar to the leaves of one of my tattoos it's gradients from dark green to light yellow so pretty well that's pretty cool um I just really had a ton of fun. Now look, you could see that my lines aren't perfect. But I, I thought this was really fun. I had originally worked on it to get the burgundy in the middle, but like I said, it just it, it doesn't blend it that way. But that is the simple leaf shape with the um with the gradient in it. So Literally, that took me two minutes to make. And that's something else you can save as a symbol or your own embroidery clip art. If you create something, like just make a folder, and then you can go in. If you're making a flower, you have, you know, five or six beautiful leaves to pick from. And it just it doesn't have to be plant leaves. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, trees. The leaves from the trees but you know i think to me that makes the design so much better so as always play around with the color gradient that will add interest to it still my favorite right here so i took some of our simple simple leaves and i added them to my sunflower and this is just exactly how we did the stem back there it's just a rectangle. I added two points, bent it, and then I added a little bit of ground because my grandma always said that it has to be grounded. You don't want it floating in the air, of course. And uh, I think that is actually really a very cute embroidery design. Um, I may stitch it out if I have time. It's just been hectic over here. But the same leaf, and I changed the angles of the leaf. Now, this is just the flat one. Imagine what it would look like with the two parts. So you could change it around. No variance in it, but I think you guys should do a variance in them. But see, one I have on this side over the stem. This one's a little bit, you know, kind of more towards the edge. This one leaf is behind and this leaf is behind so that gives it a little bit um of perspective now sunflower leaves kind of have a different shape than this they're huge i love them um but it doesn't matter because we know it's a sunflower so the sunflower would make a gorgeous quilt block you should start a quilt block of the month actually i am um i have been studying that's why i've been so busy any free minute I have, I've been learning and studying. Um, quilting, free 
freehand quilting. No, that's not what it's called, but I, I want to learn how to do it. And I really thought that I would love to make quilt blocks with things that I love just to make something really cool. So half of, I think, half of the beauty of a quilt block is the embroidery, but also the actual quilting, free motion quilting. Thank you. I need more sugar and a nap. Um, but I'm learning how to do it um, for digitizing. I'm, I'm not gonna, you know, do it on those big machines or anything. So everything will be hand drawn by me. So they'll be 100% original. I'm also looking, um, doing research for old old timey quilting designs that they used to do by hand and um i'm kind of looking at those for the different patterns the different things you know old english old scottish that sort of thing so books from as early as they printed books is what i'm looking at actually on the smithsonian website the book website so yes, I'm always working hard to come up with new things. And my goal is to make, um, you can do free motion with McDreamy and the weightless quilter. Yeah, I know, but it's going to take me a long, long time to learn the free motion. I tried it a couple times and went, oh yeah, that's going to take a lot more work. So I want to learn how to draw it first. And then, you know, maybe if I have time, get on to that. And then I can teach you guys how to do it. If I get really good at it, I'll teach you guys how to do it. And that might be part of our digitizing as well, how to make some of the designs, because I think it makes it. Um, Misha says, I want to start doing piecing and free motion, but I'm terrified. You know, I bought an AccuQuilt and I have um, quilt pieces and that's what I'm doing. I, I'm learning sewing. I've got the basics down. I can do a quarter inch seam. And I read everywhere, if you got that down pat, you're fine. So um, I'm going to learn more stuff. But yeah, that's where I'm at. And I just think putting that into embroidery and adding a few of our designs, I think it's going to be gorgeous. So I've been doing the piecing um, either in the hoop or I call it manually, but it's a sewing machine for um, a couple months now. So mostly at night when I'm supposed to be relaxing or and or sleeping, I'm studying or practicing or learning. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. No patience for quilting in the hoop. Um, yeah, I just, it's biting off more than I can chew right now. And when you're learning a skill, we know that embroidery is a skill. You want to take it um, piece by piece. If I could learn how to draw the free motion and make it decent, then I will be better um, to be able to, you know, do it on the machine. I practiced for hours to get a quarter inch seam. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you how long it took me, but I'm I'm really confident with it now, and that was kind of my goal. When I learned free motion quilting, I drank wine and had music playing. It helped me to relax and get a tempo going at work. Yeah, I've actually, as funny as that is, that's what people are saying. If you're all tense and scared about it, it's it doesn't work as well. Um, so yeah, whatever it takes. But I will get into that later and I'll keep working on my sewing. Um, McDreamy is an absolute excellent uh, sewing machine. Oh my goodness. I bought a smaller one and I call it the tank. You need a long arm, Sue. I, I know. They're very expensive and they take up a lot of room. And I don't know. If I keep doing quilts, then maybe, but I don't know. I don't know. Practice makes perfect. Yep, it takes a lot of time. So in between classes and sew alongs and the Anita Good Design stuff that I really, really want to do, that's what I've been doing. And that's probably why I'm so tired. I stay up till midnight every night practicing um, 
quilting stitches or researching or something. So we have lots coming up, you guys. So I'm going to end this here. I want to see your uh, leaves, maybe even the burgundy ones too, or simply add some really pretty leaves to your um, sunflowers or flowers that you made or your garden box and post them in the OML Embroidery University Facebook group. So thanks everybody for watching. I hope you guys like this video. I hope you guys support me with a like and a share and get all of your embroidery friends to join in the digitizing. Remember, you can do this digitizing in any embroidery digitizing software. So I'll see you guys on Saturday for another stitch along. Bye everyone. Bye.